what's going on guys? This is Bryce Lewis. I'm here at Aaliyah FTS talking about glutes. I feel like with as much attention as hamstrings get, the glutes are an underappreciated muscle group. They are a gigantic muscle group on the backside of our body, used in the completion of the squat, used in stabilization in the bench press, used in completion of the deadlift, especially sumo deadlift. So if you've never taken glute training seriously or never even done let's say a short period of training your glutes, I highly suggest it. So we're gonna go over four exercises today, four of my favorites, and hopefully you'll feel your glutes um, on one of these, and, and more importantly, feel the transfer in training your glutes to actual increases in your one rep max for your squat, and especially your deadlift overall, that lockout strength, your ability to complete heavy lifts overall. So the glutes are primarily active when we're either taking our knee and moving our knee out this way, or taking our knee and moving our knee down this way like a sprinter pushing off. We'll get the glute active here. So what we'll do is some cable pull throughs. Um, I was just talking about the fact that we are just under John Meadows. John Meadows is the very first person I saw do a demo for cable pull throughs. So it's super cool for me to be here doing this demo. But uh, essentially all we have is a cable stack and a cable set all the way to the bottom and a typical tricep rope attachment down to the bottom. I'm straddling it and I have 110 pounds over here. The weight really doesn't matter. All that matters is that you have enough weight at least to counterbalance you to start off with. So the most awkward thing for a cable pull through, um, number one, yes, I'll get out of the way at the start. It looks a little bit awkward in the gym. You just have to get over it. We are training just like you train anything else. I'm sure you wouldn't mind, you know, screaming in a gym. So let's not mind this either. Anyway, we're going to step out and we're gonna find this point of balance here. My stance isn't quite a sumo stance, but it's certainly not a squat stance either. And notice that I have a forward lean to counterbalance here. And as I move, I'm basically moving to keep myself in my center of gravity so I'm not gonna fall forward or backward here. What I wanna do is have a little bit of bend in my knees so I can have a little bit more range of motion. And from there, we're just basically treating this like a hip hinge. So we're going to allow the cables to come back in between and then using your glutes to complete the movement as we finish all the way up. Now, specifically for glute exercises, we don't wanna skip out on that last 15% of the range of motion. So we wanna make sure that you get full completion here and a nice contraction overall. So once again, <clears throat> we'll just grab the ends here of a typical rope, bring it out, take our stance, keep even foot pressure overall, finish down and through and finish up. You don't have to actively spread the handles out here. You can just kind of keep them in a neutral spot and just kind of complete the reps this way. So that's our first one of four exercises. Right, the barbell hip thrust is next. Um, great, fantastic, loadable movement with a barbell so we can progress to quite heavy loads on this. Now, technically a glute bridge is with your shoulders on the ground and a glute thrust is with your shoulders on a bench pad here. We can do this with no added support here, but I have a pad here just to make it a little bit more comfortable because the bar is ultimately going to be resting on your hips here. So I'm just going to take this pad and put it around the barbell. Um, now this is a little bit more dynamic than the cable pull through we just talked about. So it's understandable that it will take a little bit of time to find out where your specific foot position is best. Um, in some foot positions, you'll feel your hamstrings a little bit more rather than your glutes. So kind of just want to play around and find out where you are. One of the limitations is surely that we need to be at the point where you can actually slide under the barbell. I know this isn't the case for everyone. So if you have a glute thrust or a hip thruster machine at your gym, do I that it's basically identical to this, but this is the barbell version that anyone can do at a home gym as well. So we wanna kind of find an immobile surface. Like I have this bench here with a bunch of weight behind it, but if you just wanna take a bench and put it perpendicular to a wall so that it's not gonna move as you push up against it, that's gonna be a good way to go too. So. Kind of wedge yourself in here, we'll get our feet set. And then you're just going to press against the barbell as you use your hips as the primary mover here and elevate the barbell up. So again, a strong glute contraction at the top. That's about what we're looking for for a finish. And then back down, doing multiple reps here. If you're able to see it, the Finishing position here looks a lot like the finishing position for a deadlift as well. We know that the glutes are highly involved in that last lockout phase for the deadlift. Of course, we can get highly specific practice by doing deadlifts themselves, but if we need to solve specific issues, 
like a weak lockout or increased confidence, we can certainly do that with a good thrust. All right, so we're talking about a walking dumbbell lunge right now, and you may be thinking uh, lunges are typically quad exercises. You're absolutely right, they are. But you'd be surprised how many athletes tell me that they feel their glutes primarily when they're doing a walking dumbbell lunge. And I think it has to do with that front to back motion of the knee and that activating the glute like we were talking about. So what we'll be doing is just demoing uh, a walking dumbbell lunge here and some of the things that you might wanna consider. I've got some dumbbells here. You wanna make sure that your step isn't too big or too small. So a small step like this forces you to essentially step backwards and down uh, if we wanna kinda keep the knee directly over the ankle, which isn't really a goal. We at least want the knee to be here, certainly not behind, most likely forward uh, in the same way that at the bottom of a squat, your knee is actually forward out in front of your ankle overall. So you wanna mind how big that step is. So something around here allows me to come down and bring this knee forward, pretty similar to where it might be on a squat. From here, we wanna use the front foot primarily to stand up and bring the back foot to match the front as we switch feet and do the same thing again, bringing the back foot up to the front. So any nice long length we have here, we have a turf, but even if you have to go back and forth across a small space a bunch of times, that's perfectly fine as well. We'll be working the glutes here. We're looking at, especially for hypertrophy work, anywhere between like 10 to even 15 reps per leg. So yes, we'll be stepping for a while. Yes, it's difficult in a totally different kind of way. And yes, I highly suggest it. Okay, last one here is a, a hyperextension, basically. We have a 45 degree hyperextension right here. You can do this on any type of glute ham raise as well, um, but anything where your feet are locked in. I like this specifically because we get a little bit more range of motion overall. There are two primary ways to do hyperextensions. We can either do them to focus on the low back or we can do them to focus on the glutes, depending on what we do with our upper back overall. So if you're performing a basic hyperextension movement and you're arching and keeping your back very high overall, we tend to get the erectors being the dominant muscle group during the movement. If we purposefully round the upper back and contract and really try to make the lower back passive, we have the glutes being the active primary moving group here. So rounding the upper back, staying tucked here and using the glutes to lead this motion as we come back up to the lockout. And we can see this being a glute driven movement overall. Um, I've elevated the surface here to get a little bit more range of motion. People who are following Elite FTS are probably no strangers to tinkering and playing with your equipment to make it suit you as best as possible. So we'll talk about a few more ways that you can tinker to make this specific for you. Now, I'm a shorter athlete, um, as there are many out there. This really isn't high enough for me to get my hips high enough to get a nice full range of motion here. So I'm just gonna elevate my feet higher by using these DC blocks here. Any basic stable surface here will do the exact same thing. But all this does is get my hips higher on the contact point so that I have a little bit more range of motion and I can kind of get down a little bit more comfortable overall. So that's the first modification I'm gonna make. Uh, with no load here, I can do this all day. So we're gonna start to add a little bit of loading. We can do this with two primary ways here. Number one, I can just hold some weight here. We can do this either with a dumbbell, a kettlebell, um, even a plate kind of hugged in close to the body. With a barbell, you can take a snatch grip to make sure that you have enough range of motion because when we have a snatch grip, you get the bar closer to your chest overall. So that's a nice way of doing this as well. And of course we have bands. So we'll just kind of demo a few of these as well. On the bands, we have some band pegs here that we can hook this band around and then the band will go around the neck overall. So let's first get this band here. Let's get it looped on this other side over here. And we'll get back into position. I think I may have overcommitted with this band tension, but we're here already, so we're gonna we're gonna go with it. Let's see what this is like. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, that's great. All right, glad I did that. Um, the other version is any kind of plate. We have this specialized plate over here, but the plate will do the same exact thing. And all we wanna do with any of these loading strategies is keep it in close to the body so we have as much range of motion as possible. Again, focusing on that rounded upper back to make sure the glutes are the primary mover here. You may find, by the way, that letting your feet naturally rotate out allows your glutes to be a little bit more active rather than keeping them straight. So 
rather than your foot being here, let's turn your foot out just a little bit and see how that feels. Okay. Okay, lastly, as far as any loadable movement, we're really looking to increase hypertrophy. We really wanna train that muscle group two to three times per week in a moderate rep range of eight to 12 reps in a moderate difficulty of six to eight RPE most of the time. Hope you enjoy, hope it helps your deadlift overall. See you next time.